Welcome back, advanced math students. What we have today is a word problem. This is actually number 34 in the book, and I'll just go ahead and put that right there. This is a problem you're going to need to learn how to do for uh, future tests and quizzes and so on. What we have here, setting this problem up, is an awning that some architect has made, and this represents like a patio of glass and they want to make this awning a certain length here to keep the sun out of off the glass door so the sun is at this angle they want to know how long this awning here has to be so it's you can clearly see this is definitely a right triangle and um, we need to know the hypotenuse length of this triangle now I if this is the first time you've seen this and you're one of my students I invite you to just pause the video and uh, did not mean to do that. Pause the video and try this problem on your own to see if you can find this right here, which we'll call C. Okay, for the, the hypotenuse. Um, but we're going to go ahead and work through this problem. The way I did it was I started labeling everything that I could. Now I'm going to put all my new angles here in blue. Um, so if this is 63, that makes this angle right here 27. And due to this being alternate interior angles, this 63 right here actually equals this one. But the another way to look at it is this is also a right angle right here. So this is 90 degrees. So this is actually a right angle here too. It's kind of not really necessary to put that in there, but that's fine. For you visual people, you'll like that. And if this is 90, this is 27, that makes this 63. Now... The other thing you can look at, keep labeling stuff. So if you're ever in the dark about where to start this, just keep labeling stuff. If this is 55, this angle here has to be 35. And now since we know that, that interior angle of that black right triangle right there, and this is a 90, that makes this 55. Moving on. There are more angles in this. We have the angle formed. Now, this is a this is a hypothetical line here formed by the sun. But light does travel in these nice straight lines like this. This is why if a uh, airplane flies overhead and the shadow of that plane passes across the ground, it is airplane shaped, even though the thing is thousands of feet in the air. But that's beside the point. If this is 63 and this is 55 and that is a straight line right there, we can now solve for this angle of that triangle. And if you do that math, this is called supplementary angles. 63, 55 from 180 is 62 degrees. 62. Moving on with these triangles. Now we have this upper red triangle here. That is not a right triangle, but yet it still has 180 degrees in it. And we have 62, 55, and this would be 63 degrees. So now we pretty much have everything labeled. And um, just kind of like the ink blot test, when you look at this, everybody sees different things. Um, but the thing you have to realize is what you're trying to find. I am trying to find this side right there. That's the side I am trying to find. So I need to know lengths of this triangle somehow. If you look at it and you see a big, the big triangle formed by the sun's ray, this dotted line here, and this black line all the way down, I know that the height of this patio or whatever door this is or the house is 13 feet, and this angle here is 27 well, then that gives me a triangle that looks basically like this. <clears throat> Just sketching this out. Looking familiar. This is nothing more than right triangle trigonometry here. <clears throat> this would be 13, 27. And if I want to find that distance right there, that would be this red dotted line. This, I'm just modeling this picture. And that would be nothing more than tangent of 27 degrees equals x over 13 and we would multiply 13 times tangent of 27, and x will equal about 6.6 .6 after you do that. And since I didn't label this feet, this would be feet or whatever unit you decide to put on there. 
So now I can put that on there. This is now 6.6. .6. That is the red dotted line because the red dotted line is actually the opposite side from this 27 degree angle on the big triangle that I'm tracing out here, kind of air tracing that. So now I know this and I know this <clears throat> and that puts me now in a new world of the law of sines. So now what I'm going to do is make a second triangle. Do this best I can. What I'm drawing out here is this red triangle. And this red triangle side here, C, shares this awning length, which is what we're trying to find. So we're getting closer and closer. We're drilling this thing down into what we need to find. I can label this. This is now 6.6. .6. This is 63 degrees. This is 55. This is 62. And if I want to do this, if I want to solve for C, I can apply the law of sines right now. Now, I, I can... You know, at this point, you guys are going to have to learn how to label stuff. So if this is opposite side C, I can call this C, and I can call this A or B. I'm just going to call it A. So this would be um, little a. And if I set that up right there, just like we've been doing, um, we know that A over sine of A equals C over sine of C. And we have also made videos on why that's true. So if I plug this all in, 6.6 .6 over the sine of 62 equals C over the sine of 63. And if we do this math, we will find out the answer to the question that we want. So when you cross multiply this, it's going to be 6.6 .6 times the sine of 63 divided by the sine of 62. Um, if you're shaky on how to do this step, you should look at the other videos because that's explained in the other one, so I'm not going to go over that. When you do this answer, little c would equal about 6.7. 6.7, and in our case, that would be feet uh, because I've been saying feet the whole time. So this awning length has to be 6.7, and that's how you solve that awning problem, number 34. Have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.